Hey, what's up guys? We're going to look at polarization. So what does this word polarization mean? It simply means restricting a wave to one plane of oscillation. To understand this fully, we need to go back a little step and look at transverse and longitudinal waves. You should remember that with transverse waves, the oscillations are at 90 degrees angle, so the direction of energy transfer of a wave. Examples of these are EM waves, water waves and S waves and some mechanical waves like you may have seen it on a slinky in one of your lessons. So you can see in this diagram there's actually an infinite number of oscillations that are at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer over here. You've got vertical, you've got horizontal, then you've got all the angles in between. There's many 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 different planes of oscillation. With a longitudinal wave the definition is this, the oscillations are parallel along the same direction as the energy transfer of the wave. So if the blue line is the energy transfer, there's only actually one direction for the vibration or oscillation to be. It's already restricted to one plane of oscillation. The examples of longitudinal waves are sound waves, P waves, which are a type of seismic wave, and a mechanical wave, such as on a slinky where you push it, it's a compression wave. Now polarization, let's just go back to that definition, is restricting a wave to one plane of oscillation. We've just seen that with longitudinal waves, there's only one way in which they can vibrate. So it's not possible to restrict this any further. In a way, it's kind of already polarized. But for your exams, we're always going to say that longitudinal waves cannot be polarized. So they can't be polarized. And you need to know that polarization is a property of transverse waves. You can only do it to transverse waves. So here's my transverse wave, which has got a load of different planes of oscillation. If I polarize it, what I'm doing is I'm restricting the, vi the vibrations, the oscillations to one plane. So this is a vertically polarized. This one has been vertically polarized. And the one below demonstrates that you could do it horizontally. You could actually polarize in any one of those 360 degree angles. There's an infinite number of different permutations of the polarization that you can actually do. But quite often, we're generally going to look at vertical and horizontal polarization. So in summary, transverse waves can be polarized, but longitudinal waves can't. So how do we polarize an electromagnetic wave or another transverse wave? What we use is a polarizing filter, and I've drawn them here in orange. So here is my EM wave, and this is unpolarized. I'm going to put UP for unpolarized. And when it passes through this polarizing filter, because this is oriented in a vertical direction, we are left with vertical polarization. So the vertical polarizing filter only allows this one oscillation, this vertical oscillation through, and we call that vertical polarization. If I had my filter arranged horizontally, I would only let through the horizontal oscillation. So that has been horizontally polarized. What we've done is we've restricted the oscillations to one plane. So rather than this infinite number of oscillations, we're only letting through this one specific direction. As I mentioned previously, it doesn't have to be vertical or horizontal. It can be at any angle. So let's say here, this is at a, I don't know, a 37 degree angle. We're only letting through that oscillation that is at that specific angle. Once again, it has been polarized. So the way that we polarize transverse waves is by using polarizing filters, and it only lets through that one plane of oscillation that the filter allows through. So how do we test for polarization? How do we prove it? The way we do that is that we have to actually use two polarizing filters. So I'm going to number them here, number one and number two. So in example A, we have our unpolarized light, and then it passes through filter one, which means that we have vertical polarized uh, transverse wave coming through. This has an original light intensity of I naught. And now we're going to pass it through a second filter, which you can see here. This one, again, is oriented in the vertical direction. So the angle between filters one and two is actually zero degrees. And when it's zero degrees, we get the same intensity of light through as what we started. So I can say the intensity of light passing through the second filter is equal to the original intensity of the polarized light. So I is equal to I naught. We're just letting the vibrations pass through. But what happens if we rotate 
that second filter. I'm always going to keep filter one vertically polarized. But in this case now, in case B, I have just simply rotated that second filter by 30 degrees. What happens now is not all of the original polarized light passes through, only the component at 30 degrees to that filter passes through. So we get a smaller intensity of light passing through. It's very difficult to see with this one, but it'll be easier when we look at the next example. So we can say here that the intensity passing through the second filter is less than the original intensity of polarized light I naught. Case C is the really important one that you really need to know for your exams. So once again, we have our unpolarized light. We have our vertical polarizing filter here. And this time our second filter is at a 90 degree angle to the first. It is now horizontal. So it's acting as a horizontal polarizing filter. The vertically polarized light here cannot pass through that horizontal filter. So we get no intensity of light. No EM wave can pass through. So the intensity of light passing through the second filter is zero. Vertically polarized light cannot pass through a horizontal polarizing filter. So what happens if we keep rotating? I'm gonna keep rotating that second filter and I'm gonna take it all the way to 180 degrees. So you can see now that this filter is pointing in this downwards direction. So we have our unpolarized light, which passes through our first filter, which gives me vertically polarized light. And now the polarizing filter is once again vertically oriented. So we get all of that vertically polarized light passing through. So we can say that I is equal to I naught once again. What is really important here is that you understand that every 90 degrees, the intensity varies from maximum from I naught to zero. And you can see that on this graph here. So when the two filters are vertically arranged, we get maximum intensity, which you can see here. When the second filter is at 90 degrees, you've got a vertical and a horizontal filter, so we get no light passing through. When we rotate through 180 degrees, the second filter is once again vertically aligned, so we get all of that polarized light passing through. If we carried on rotating to 270 degrees, we'd once again be in the case where you've got a vertical filter and a horizontal filter and none passes through. Then if we rotate that second filter all the way through 360 degrees, we'll get all that light passing through because the two filters are arranged. In summary, when you have two polarizing filters that are arranged in the same plane, you'll get all that light passing through. If you have one that is at a 90 degree orientation to the first, the polarized light cannot pass through. And it varies between these. Every 90 degrees that you turn that second filter, your intensity of light will fluctuate from the maximum to zero. And that's how you test for polarization. So let's just summarize everything that we've talked about in this video. Polarization is restricting a wave to one plane of oscillation. It only applies to transverse waves. We cannot polarize longitudinal waves because they only have one plane of oscillation. How do we do polarization? We use a polarizing filter. And you could have vertical polarization, you could have horizontal polarization, or you can have polarization at an angle theta. The way that we test for polarization, you have to use two polarizing filters. And when those two filters, number one and number two, are aligned, you get maximum intensity. And when one is rotated through an angle of 90 degrees, you get zero intensity. And as you continue to rotate through 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees, the intensity of light passing through the second filter will fluctuate from maximum to zero back to maximum again. There's a lot to take in there, so watch it again and really think carefully about the way that the filters are arranged. And that's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.